Hey guys, Paul here. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the new era that we're entering in Yu-Gi-Oh. Now I'll openly admit that's kind of a clickbait title, but I mean, hear me out. I, eh. So right now we're kind of on the precipice of a lot of new decks being released. In Burst of Destiny, we're getting things like Sword Soul, which is getting a lot of hype. It's got a lot of high rarity cards. It's got really cool art and it's a seemingly pretty strong strategy. We're also getting Fluanderies. Don't know where that name came from, um, but it's a fun one to say. I've actually been playing that deck a bit myself. It's pretty fun. We're getting Fluanderies in that set. We, of course, get Destiny Hero Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Also a mouthful of a name. Um, and so basically, that's all coming in Burst of Destiny. We also get like Legendary Duelist Synchro Storm, which has um, the Fleur, the Fleur Synchro Monster. It's level 10. I don't remember its exact name. And the Grand Creators comes out in a couple of months. And so... Basically, what does this all mean? It means that we are entering kind of what the next year of Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to look like. And for those of you guys who've played this game for many, many years, like myself, you'll kind of realize this and it, it's routine. But for the people who might be newer to the game, you've only been playing for a year or two years, whatever, this is kind of how it goes. Basically, Usually around the fall is when the game resets. It's for a long time ago, it used to be like when the ban list would drop. It would be like September, right? And um, that's also around the times that, you know, a lot of the cards from the past year will be reprinted. So you notice the Megatons conveniently always come out around like late August or September, October, whatever. And that's sort of where all the major stuff from last year gets reprinted. In this case, we got reprints of all the Dogmatica engine. Now you can actually pick up stuff like Nadira's Servant and Ecclesia for relatively cheap. Um, you can also get old staples, things like uh, Triple Tactics Talent, um, Ice Dragon's Prison, you know, unfortunately not for Droplets, that's getting reprinted soon though. And other archetypes like Tri Brigade and um, Virtual World got reprinted and cards from that set like Alpha the Master of Beasts and Divine Arsenal Zeus also get the reprints. So basically, What's really happening here is Konami is about to transition us into a new set of decks. It isn't to say the old decks are completely dead, but rather it's a good indication that they will probably be on the way out soon. So we've seen instances of this in the past. Um, a really notorious example is the 2015 Yu-Gi-Oh! Megatons. These were the ones that you know reprinted a lot of stuff from like Shadal's, Cleeforts, um, like Burning Abyss and Necroz, they all got loads of reprints, and then within the next ban list that only came about a month later, slash burned. All those decks left. Another really good example is um, the Megatons in 2019. So 2019 is a more recent example that I think a lot of people can relate to. Uh, Salamangrate, Sky Strikers, Thunder Dragons, Orcus, that whole little like format that people like. They all sort of got their reprint. Suddenly you can build a Thunder Dragon deck for really cheap. Colossus and Titan and all that stuff. It's all printed in the tens and easy to get. Um, and like same with things like Sky Striker and Gage and all that. Then the January 2020 ban list came along. Bam, Raj Dalio's ban. Bam, Electromite's ban. Bam, Harp Horror's ban. Bam, Engage's ban. Like, you know, just... Right? And so... I say this... I don't want to say like as a warning because it's pretty exciting. But I say this as like... For people who are maybe deciding what deck that you want to build right now, it might be good to invest in some of these newer strategies. And, you know, you can interpret invest however you want. I'm not saying you need to go out and buy Sword Soul for hundreds of dollars. I'm just saying that I would expect decks like Drytrons, decks like Tri Brigades, and maybe decks like Virtual World that are, you know, doing really well in the metagame right now will likely be getting hit harder in January. My evidence to back that up is literally just my experience with the game in years past where this just tends to be a trend. Um, this recent ban list was pretty light, and I think a lot of the reason why is just because of the delays around the tens and, of course, the need to sell the tens. If the tens are going to introduce reprints for Zeus, then you can't go banning Zeus. Or if they're going to reprint you know, Dogmatica and Tri Brigade and all these things, then they can't like hit them on that ban list. But I do think that January will be a little bit different. So what are the decks that maybe you should be looking towards instead? Well, obviously, I've already mentioned Sword Soul and Fluanderies. <laughs> so weird to say. But even things in the Grand Creators, things like the Brave Token deck. I know that's like an engine that a lot of people are excited about. Um, 
that's a really good one. But also it seems like some of the other archetypes in there, like Exor Sisters, for instance, might have some potential to be pretty powerful in this metagame that we're going to be headed toward. And also just a Destiny Hero engine might be worth picking up. I don't believe that, that <laughs> Destroy Phoenix Enforcer will actually be as like cost prohibitive as Dragoon was. Dragoon felt like it was sort of short printed in last year's tins, but Secret Rares these days tend to not be short printed in main series sets. At least that's what the evidence seems to suggest. That's what Konami claims. Who knows if that's true, but I don't believe that it'll be as expensive. I also think that there are certain little decks that have been slowly getting power-ups from set to set to set that are finally kind of reaching their pinnacle. The big example I've been talking to a lot of people about is Evil Twins. So, you know, they got like cards like um, the Leela Treat and um, Kisa Kill Frost earlier in the year, which just sort of helped to give you a little one more extender, a little one more way to play the deck, you know, a little bit more monsters to use. And then we got Sunny Snitch in the last set. And now we have, what is it, Sunny's Trouble or Trouble Sunny that's releasing in Burst of Destiny. So each set this year, they've gotten like one little extra new card. And it's usually been a pretty strong consistency card. And now they've finally gotten like the full on boss monster. So I think a deck like Evil Twins, it's kind of gone a bit under the radar. But I think that might be something that's really worth picking up and like investing in or playing or whatever, experimenting with. Also, even just things like, say, Despia, there's like a little bit of potential in that. And the reason all of this happens is basically because Konami, you know, love them or hate them for this, they want this game to move forward, right? The same decks that have been dominant can't be dominant forever. New products have to sell. And you could call that, you know, I guess, horrible dark capitalism. You'd have a point. But... It's also just how games have to kind of go, right? Like, you know, we got to sell the new products. We want the new stuff. It's exciting. It's fun. It's different. Wouldn't it be nice to not have to, you know, sit down and play against a deck that's going on a year and a half old, right? Like, it'll be a little boring to play Tri Brigade, like start 2022 and still be playing against like Tri Brigade. You know what I mean? Like, eh, that's just kind of like a little boring. So I think that the next set of decks are the things that are getting introduced this fall and kind of early on next year, like in Battle of Chaos. Uh, so yeah, basically that's it for the video. I'm saying it more, I guess, as a piece of advice. Don't be surprised if these current decks get it pretty hard on this next ban list. And don't let it take you off guard. You know, find a new deck to play that's kind of fun. It doesn't have to be one of the super expensive ones. And it can even also be an old one, because I mean, those won't be affected really either way, like a super old deck that you've just been enjoying yourself, it's totally okay to play that. But um, yeah, if you're the type of person who kind of wants to stay on the metagame curve, I would be looking toward Fluanderies and Sword Soul and that sort of thing, because that's kind of where Konami is going to be pushing things, regardless of whether we like it or not. All right, so that's it for the video. Um, real quick, this video is sponsored by Ridge Wallets. So if you guys want, you can pick one of these up. They are absolutely wonderful. I've been using them for about two years now. I really like it. It's slim, it's sleek, it's RFID protected, and it comes in a bunch of different designs. They even have money clips for those of you boomers who still use cash. That's actually me sometimes. But yeah, if you click the link in the description, ridge.com slash APS, you can pick one up for yourself. We'd greatly appreciate it. All right, it's gonna be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Fast turn.